We need all the bras. And we're here at our super secret mystery meeting. And today we are at Funk Brewery in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. And we are drinking the Citrus India Pale Ale. <laughs> Do you remember Keith Plunkett, who Hannah talked about, about beating her in the 5K, even though he drank like a million beers? He designed this can. He has faults, but he's also, he's also good really too. good. Yeah, I like it. Do you like boobs? Do you like running? We're going to talk, talk about, about boobs and running. Welcome to our bra party. Woo! <laughs> Here we are. We decided that everybody needs to know more about sports bras. Yeah, so we're here with Jess Yetter from Brooks and Moving Comfort, and she's going to tell us a little bit about sports bras. Jess, how do our sports bras fit? First of all, you ladies look fantastic in your sports bras. We look 100. 100. <laughs> Hashtag twinning. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when we look at sports bras, we look at the bottom band because 80% of the support in a sports bra actually comes from the bottom band. Mm -hmm. So when you have the, the sports bra on, you want to make sure that the bottom band is horizontal with the ground. And you also want to check to make sure it's a comfortable tension. So nice. let me just make sure... Am I comfortable? <laughs> oh yeah, looking good. You also want to make sure the straps have a comfortable ten tension to test that. Ow! <laughs> don't hurt yourself. <laughs> but if you can slide two fingers underneath your straps comfortably, then that's a pretty good cool. tension. We didn't know that sports bras were really this important, actually. Like, um, Hannah and I were comparing notes, and I have been wearing the same sports bra, I think, from, like, my senior year of cross country because it's mm -hmm. lucky and because it fits me well and because I just didn't think I needed a sports bra. How about you, Hannah? Yeah, I definitely have some sports bras from, like, TJ Maxx and Target that I've had since probably 2008. Yeah, so that's a definite no-no. <laughs> um, we recommend that you replace your sports bra at least once a year. We like to say no bra should celebrate a birthday. Uh, the reason being is over time, the sports bra will actually stretch out. Mm -hmm. So the elasticity in that bottom band will eventually stretch out, um, which can lead to movement on the body up and down, which will eventually cause chafing and redness. Also, your size can fluctuate too. So mm -hmm. hormones, pregnancy, weight gain, weight loss can all affect your bra size. So it's always a good idea to get remeasured and get a new sports bra at least once a year. So now we have questions about uh, boob movement. I mean, everybody wants to know about how boobs move. Well, yeah, I bet. don't they just go up and down? <laughs> or kind of like this apparently. <laughs> Good question. So your boobs actually move in a figure eight motion. How so do they do a that? Lot going on. <laughs> yeah, so the biomechanics of your boobs is that when you're running, they actually do move in a figure eight motion. So when we're testing sports bras, we look at uh, vertical motion, horizontal motion, in and out motion. We look at displacement. Um, so how your boobs move in a lingerie bra compared to a sports bra mm -hmm. and um, comparing the displacement there. So there's a lot of variables that go into testing and creating a good supportive sports bra. So remember our last episode, our first episode yeah. with Megan Fox and she was like running down the street and she was wearing I was horrified because like even though I'm not like a sports bra connoisseur, she was wearing just a normal old bra and she yeah. was running like this and she's got some <laughs> big jugs. So what was going on there? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so she was wearing a, just a regular everyday lingerie bra, um, which ironically, I met a woman a few weeks ago and she was a personal trainer and she would wear lingerie bra to all of her workouts and to teach classes in. And when I asked her why she chose the lingerie bra, um, it was because she just wanted to look good. Sports bras nowadays are so much cuter than what they used to be, hence the bra yeah. that you're wearing. Um, gives you great shape and great support. The problem with lingerie bras is they're just not designed for running. So yeah. um, that figure eight motion that I was talking about, not gonna control that as well as a sports bra. Jeez. So yeah. once again, leading to redness, chafing, and overall, just not a good run. What about no bra? Because one ah, time I yes. forgot to bring my sports bra for a lunch <laughs> run and I was like, whatever, my tank top is pretty tight, so that'll be fine. But 
It was <laughs> I think there was some chafing. Oh, no, I didn't like the normal chafing spot, like the guy's chafing spot. No, it's bad. Mm, not good. When Brooks did a survey on uh, running equipment, women rated the sports bra as their number one piece of running equipment over running shoes. Whoa. So a lot of women feel that a sports bra is actually more important than a pair of running shoes. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and Thank talking with us me. and giving us all this great sports bra and boob knowledge. It's Beautiful. fascinating boob knowledge. <laughs> and now we need to put our shirts back on and go back to the meeting. Running in pop culture. Woo! There's a new show on television, or it's not on television yet, but it's going to be. Almost. And it's called the Runner. It's a reality TV show. Let me mm -hmm. tell you a little bit about it. Actually, I don't know a lot about it, but it's no Matt one does. Nobody does, right? No. It's like really vague. Yeah. So Matt Damon mm -hmm. and Ben Matt Affleck. Damon. He. They are like having this show, and it's called The Runner, and it's like about people chasing each other. Yeah, you have to like sneak into the city without being. Caught, I guess. And, and I think we're yeah. chasing each other if you yeah. get casted or something. I, we don't know, but we, it was called The Runner, so we decided that it would be good to apply. So yep. both of us applied. I applied to be a runner. I applied to be a runner, too. Okay. Yeah. And we thought that um, you should all apply because it would yeah. be really fun if we were chasing each other. And It'd then also fun. we thought we'd share our personal statements with you all. <clears throat> Oh, okay, so it says, briefly explain why you're right for this show. And I was allotted 250 words. Mm -hmm. You won't find a more enthusiastic runner on this planet. Some might describe me as a ball of fire. I won't deny this claim. If you need a strong woman with a shit ton of endurance who believes she can defeat any obstacle, I'm your gal. I've also got a good head on my shoulders. Figuratively speaking, I have a master's degree. Literally speaking, I have big hair. Both things are true. When I'm not at my day job as an editor at Runner's World magazine, you can find me hitting the streets for a run or working out in my basement gym. I've run since high school, played tennis in college, and never quit working out. I can also brave the outdoors. I mean, I don't just camp. I know how to rely on my own resources in nature. Last year, I lived in a summer cottage near Ithaca, New York that was heated solely by wood stove. I've also been subject to sleep deprivation, but that's a story for a different day. Finally, I'm a never-say-die competitor. Even if I'm in way over my head, I will truck it out till near disaster. Who else would be better for a show like this, Matt Damon? No one. I applied to, but forgot to save my application. So one of, what is it? One of the characteristics of the perfect applicant is that they are, where's it say? Oh, it says you should run, climb, lift, carry, blah, 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 blah. Also, you have to be shrewd and resilient and adaptive. So shrewd is like my middle name. What's up? Yes, yes. I've been like a little asshole since I was a child. <laughs> and I am just, you know, I looked up the definition of shrewd just, you know, because when you write all those SAT style essays, you say, oh, Merriam-Webster dictionary defines shrewd as someone who's quick to judge. And I'm very quick to judge a lot of people. True. So I think I'd be perfect. And I'm very independent, and yes. I love to run, and yes. yeah. No, I think that you would be the perfect applicant. So, Matt Damon. Pick us. We are going to be the best. We will make your show. We will get you a million views. And then we'll get a million views. Boom. Done. See you right. next week, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and like us and do all that other shit. And we share love it. Yay. Oh, yeah. Sharing. Yes, share, share it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, you're just braiding it. You're not French braiding it. <laughs> What's the difference? French braiding starts like up here. And you have to like. Oh, God. Perfect.